Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Pathfinder Keymaker Enhanced Edition with me, Bring It Don. Uh, before we talk to Oleg, we're going to level up our two new companions. Uh, so Octavia is already basically built to become a uh, arcane trickster. So we're just going to continue on that path. She'll be multi-classed into the arcane trickster. Uh, so she needs knowledge arcane uh, four, I think mobility four, and trickery four. And then we want her to have use magic device as well. Uh, grab accomplish sneak attacker as soon as possible. Always recommended on her. Uh, for these, I'll probably grab her stone fist just because it's under transmutation and she specializes in transmutation and I like continuing along that path. Uh, haste is my favorite spell in the game and I like her focusing, being, being the haster. Now grab reduced person as well for armor class purposes. I give her a point into intelligence and then max these out. All right, so you don't have to worry about putting points in these anymore. I mean, I do recommend uh, maxing out her trickery, but use magic device is super important on her. All right, so here, last time I did focus on these, they're not as important. Um, they kind of get. They become obsolete pretty early on. Uh, blur is always useful though. Uh, so is uh, mir uh, mirror image. I can't talk. I'm sorry. But yeah, mirror image is really good regardless. So let's grab that. All right. So next level, she should be able to grab arcane trickster. And then Reg here. I'm gonna multi-class him into a dragon disciple. You could argue that that's not a good idea because Magus are already limited in the spells they can cast, so you kind of want them to get up to their mass casting potential as soon as possible, as well as their heavy armor. Arcane heavy armor, pretty big deal. Uh, at most, I'll probably put seven points in a Dragon Disciple so that he can still get his arcane heavy armor, because it's really good. Uh, I think all he needs, let me double check, it's only five points. Oh, where's it at? Yeah, five points in a Knowledge Arcana. So we'll do that. A weapon focus. It doesn't get any better than the scimitar for Reg. Because the scimitar has a greater crit range than most weapons. I think it was at 18 to 20. And when a Magus uses a spell strike ability or a touch attack, because they can use touch attacks through their weapons, not only does the weapon crit, but the spell will also crit on top of that. As well as, there's a bunch of scimitars with rune blade in the game, which, when they, whenever they have a touch spell ready to go, it increases the weapon's uh, attack chance. So you can get make a weapon a plus seven weapon. Uh, there's a plus five rune blade scimitar later in the game, and it becomes a plus seven when he has a spell blade, uh, when he has a spell a touch spell ready to go. So. Uh, I'll probably just grab him extended magic. And then here, uh, really any touch spell is a good idea. Or enlarged person for himself is also a good idea. So that's what we'll grab. Boom. Alright, another level of Magus. Give him strength. Dodge Arcana. Yeah, something like that. That looks good. Uh, blur is really good on Reg, as is Mirror Image. There we go. Alright, let's talk to Oleg. A fine day to you. What brings you by? Uh, the Stag Lord's gone. We found his fortress and sent the villain to oblivion. Oleg looks at you with respect bordering on admiration. In good riddance, maybe now we'll be able to actually live in the Stolen Lands, rather than just surviving. Oleg sighs. Without a doubt, more people will flock here now. It'll surely boost trade, by all the noise they'll bring with them. Well, that's none of your concern. I bet you can't wait to return to Restoff and report your great victory. Restoff awaits. I plan to set off right away. The fog seems to be thinning, but we should wait until it burns off completely. In the meantime, I've gathered some supplies for your journey to make sure you can enjoy your trip back to Restoff. Heck yeah.
Adventures can wait. Good work. <laughs> nice to see I haven't lost my intuition for people. Not many would have managed to set out to the Stolen Lands and return with the Stag Lord's head. But I knew you could handle it. Like how my guy's still exhausted as he's... <laughs> okay. The adventures can wait. You've pulled it off even faster than I expected. Very good. We were short of time, and these months you've won for us proved very useful. Lord Mayor Salemius especially appreciated it, and asked me to give you this little token of gratitude. Hey, I got it, everybody. I made it with like a day and two hours to spare. I got the Lord Protector. That's the uh, the plus two dueling sword you get for uh, defeating the Stag Lord within 30 days. Congratulations are in order. Today, you'll receive the title of Baron before the High Society of Restov, and even Natala Sertova personally. God's bless her. Tomorrow, you'll be able to return to the Stolen Lands if you wish, but this time as a ruler. But matters of state can wait. For now, enjoy this feast in your honor. All the city leaders are here. It's a great opportunity to make some useful connections. Speaking of connections, let me introduce you to Kassil Eldori. He's my adopted son and apprentice. He's a trustworthy man. I'd like to send him with you as an envoy. Castle, a young half work with impeccable poise, performs a textbook perfect bow. Jabandi, just what kind of game are you playing? I think I have the right to know. Yes, yes, you certainly have that right. But tell me, how well do you know Brevoy's history or the current political atmosphere? It won't be an easy explanation. Uh, what do I need to know about the history of Brevoy? What's now called Brevoy was originally two different countries, Rostland and Isia. 200 years ago, they were stuck in constant squabbles. Then, Coral the Conqueror showed up and united the two states into one. Such diplomatic tricks are easy to manage when you have dragons at your disposal. The so-called noble houses of Brevoy, mainly Sertova, Orlovsky, and Lebeda, once ruled over Isia. We, the Aldori, ruled Rostland. The royal house Rogarvia, founded by Coral the Conqueror, forced us into obedience. But 200 years isn't long enough to make peace with such a troubled history. Even 2,000 years wouldn't be enough for us to accept Isian rule. Brevoy is a country held together by a thread, and that thread grows ever <coughs> weaker. Uh, what do I need to know about the current political atmosphere? We, the Aldori and the great noble houses, spent 200 years under the rule of invaders, the royal house Rogarvia. We plotted, we schemed, we stabbed each other in the back. But open confrontation was out of the question. But a few years ago, House Rogarvia disappeared. No one knows how or why, but one day, their manners were just empty. And the force that held Brevoy together, that kept us from a bloody feud, ceased to be. If anyone knows the history of House Rogarvia, I'll probably look it up off camera, but uh, yeah, I want to know why they disappeared. So that's that's always interesting to me. Why do they? Because it doesn't get addressed in the game. I don't think they just vanish. So I'm assuming it's some sort of lore in the Pathfinder world that uh that I would like to know. Brevoy is currently ruled by the House Sertova, the former kings of Isia, but their power pales in comparison to that of House Rogarvia when they were here. So now Sertova and Aldori stand facing each other, staring each other in the eye waiting for the other to draw their sword. It's an untenable situation. No one wants a civil war that would drown Brevoy in blood. But peace between us is also out of the question. What role do I play in your plans? Rostland wants to regain its independence, and we will regain it. The power the Issians hold over us is humiliating and costly, and the Sertovas won't give us our freedom without a fight. That is... Unless there is some external power that can force everyone to sit down and talk. Do you see where this is going? The Stolen Lands are disputed territory. Brevoy can't appropriate them without raising protests from each of the neighboring states. However, if some brave people were to found independent states on that land, it would be another matter entirely. 
My hope is that you and your future neighbors, Baron Hannes Drelev and Captain Mager Varn, will become our allies. But even your neutrality would introduce a powerful counterbalance to the aggression of the noble houses. Maybe, with your help, the inevitable division of Brevoy can occur without too much pain. Do the Sword Lords have any other foreign allies capable of playing this role? We hope to get some help from the Maivani Eldori, the descendants of the Sword Lords who have fled from Coral's rage to build a new nation in the south. But the Issians know this well, and are doing everything they can to deny us this help. I won't go into details, but if my intelligence is correct, if a civil war starts in Brevoy, Maivan will be too occupied with its own inner troubles to interfere. Uh, what part does Restov play in this game? Restov is a free city, proud of its independence from everyone, including the Aldori Sword Lords. But when it comes to Rostland's liberation, our goals align. This whole plan is our joint creation with Lord Mayor Yosef Selimius. Well, if Natala's already here, why does she let you grant me the title? Actually, she could still intervene and disrupt the proceedings. But she's a Sertova. Their games are always complex and multi-layered. They're always looking for ways to turn defeat into victory. If she's decided to allow you to become a Baron, it means she already has some idea of how she can turn it to her benefit. Let's consider how she could do so. Maybe she understands that Rostland will inevitably separate and she doesn't want a war. In that case, new states in the Stolen Lands give the Issians a reason to sit down and talk without losing face. But that's an optimistic view. And truth be told, it doesn't quite match up with what we've come to expect from the Sertovas. The more likely scenario is that Natala wants to win you over to her side. If war breaks out and at least one of you stabs us in the back, Rostland will be surrounded by enemies. That might be enough to bring about our downfall. But you would fall first, and your newly formed states would be left in ruin. The Issians always like to have someone around to pull their chestnuts out of the fire for them. A piece of friendly advice? Don't do business with House Sertovas, no matter what promises they make you. Any deal with the noble houses is a deal with devils. Why, oh uh, well, what happens next? How should I know? We're in the middle of a big game, and today, you move from being merely a piece on the board to being one of the players. Well, thank you for the explanation. I hope you have a better understanding of what's at stake. Uh, I don't need an envoy. No, I'm, I'm actually okay with I'm going to take Castle as my envoy. Uh, do you already know about my encounter with Tartuccio? Of course. Keston gave me a full report. You dealt with the scoundrel perfectly. It would be naive to think that none of your neighbors will try to stick their hands in your affairs. Especially that sly fox, Irovetti. Right, I don't need an envoy. Don't think I'm trying to impose a nanny or a spy on you. We're neighbors now. You'll need someone knowledgeable about Brevoy's politics to act as an ambassador to your court. If you don't like Cassiel, you're Cassiel. free to choose someone else, but I won't be able to vouch for the loyalty or trustworthiness of another envoy. Well, thank you. I'm going to, go sp I'm going to speak with the guests. Enjoy your evening. When you're ready for the official part, come to me. It's pronounced Cassiel. Alright, Lander. Ah, a handsome, well-dressed young man of about 17 years old looks at you with a polite smile. So you're the famous slayer of the Stag Lord's gang, soon to be a baron. Pleased to make your acquaintance. My name is Lander. Just Lander? No last name? No title? Let's just say I'm here incognito. Under my circumstances, it's wise to keep one's lineage to oneself. Truth be told, that's precisely what I wanted to speak with you about. You see, I'm an heir to one of Brevoy's noble houses. I won't say which, but believe me, a newly appointed baron with no connections would do well to have a friend like me. Yeah, I'm sure, buddy. I travel the country in secret, without servants, so I can see it for myself. Not from a carriage window, but face to face with the people. My family would never approve, of course. But then, I never asked. I need to know Brevoy if I'm going to rule a part of it someday. I know Jamani wants to impose her stepson on you as an emissary, Brevoy. Refuse. Take me instead. Don't look at my age. While they may have trained this half-orc to swing a sword, I've been training to rule since I was a child. I'll be of far greater use to you, both now and in the future, after I have a firm position in my family. 
Are you from Rostovic uh, nobility? Rostovic? Oh no, I'm not from here. I'm just visiting, you could say. I wanted to see for myself the heroes who managed to conquer the frontier lands, and the Lord Mayor was kind enough to invite me to this wonderful party. Uh, please, tell me again what you're doing here. I travel the country in secret... Okay. Uh, tell me once more what you want from me. Okay, I'll consider the proposal. Yes, do so, and carefully. Oh, I'll be careful about it, buddy. Harem, a feast in times of pestilence. A ludicrous attempt to sink into reverie. To digress from contemplating one's own insignificance. In due time. Hannes Drelov. This man's gorgeous clothes hide rippling muscles beneath them. He looks past your ear, obviously bored. Baron Hannes Tre Drelov, he says offhandedly, emphasizing the word Baron. And he must be the Stag Lord Butcher. I'm sorry, I quite forgot your name. But he took out the Stag Lord and his gang, and so Sword Lord Jamandi is granting you permission to take his place, right? Well, congratulations. My lands lie to the west of yours. I suppose we're neighbors now. Ah, uh, yes, I defeated the Stag Lord. Pray tell, what did you do to deserve your new dominion? A smirk appears on the Baron's face. I don't need to deserve or prove anything. Countless generations of my glorious ancestors have done so for me. If I had a slightly bigger army, Sword Lord Jamandi would have simply given all the stolen lands to me. Alas, I don't have so many soldiers at my disposal, so she had to urgently make barons. Heh. <laughs> of the likes of you and Varn. So you have no army, and no special merits. You were just given land for being pretty? Under other circumstances, I'd have you whipped for such words. But let's not ruin Lady Adore's celebration, hmm? If you want so badly to measure merits, we can do so another time. Well, you're not very polite for a nobleman. Ha! Huh, politeness must be deserved. Well, goodbye. Not even deigning to reply, Baron Drelov turns around and looks away. Well, he... I can honestly say he deserves his fate. Uh, hmm. Try the eclairs. They're delicious. Haha, -ha, to victory. To freedom. Bottoms up. Bottoms up. Yes. Okay. Valerie? Truth be told, I'm not really comfortable here. I lost my taste for high society. You've been gone for a month, by the way. Yeah, our tiefling compatriot. Will you drink with me? Uh, you see Ka Kaisi approaching, a tiefling you met during the battle at Jamande Aldori's mansion. As she draws near, she places one of the cups of wine she's holding into your hand. Of course, to beauty. To beauty. It sweetens our happy days, and brings solace to our dark and sorrowful ones. Kaisi smiles and taps her cup to yours. But jokes aside, I came to... apologize. I know, the words I said in our conversation with Lady Aldery might have offended you, but this was not my intention. The lessons life has dealt me were not easy. I've learned to be wary of new acquaintances, which is why I've refused to join your party. I hope you will forgive me for this weakness and for my harsh words. And I hope you will hear me out, for I have something to tell you. Uh, no need to apologize. I don't expect everyone I meet to immediately fall under my charms and entrust me with all their secrets. How amusing. Usually those who don't seek affection are the very ones who receive it. Anyway, enough sweet talk. There is something important I wanted to tell you. Casey looks down at her cup for a moment. As it happens, I came across some very valuable information. What brave conqueror of these wild lands wouldn't be intrigued by news of an ancient shrine, possibly full of great treasures? A place such as this was discovered by my old friends from Kadira, and it just so happens to be located in the lands that today become rightfully yours. My friends lack the courage to enter the shrine and seek the treasure, but what will stop us? We who know the taste of battle and have been singed by the same fire. Kaisi stops looking at you expectantly. By the way, I've never had this conversation with her uh, because I was in the middle of a game when the DLC came out with her in it. Um, I really like her voice actor. It's uh, She's very good. Uh, what could be better than a treasure hunt? I'm ready. I'm sure you'd like to finally gain your official title and celebrate your victory. And I don't like noisy parties and ceremonies. 
Find me when you return to your dominion. I'll rent a house in your capital. We can discuss the details of our expedition there. All right. So long, friend. I'll call you so today, because soon enough, all you'll be hearing is, Your Grace, Your Grace, Your Grace. Slitting you with a cup, the tiefling girl steps back and disappears in the shadows between the columns. Well, very slowly at that. Oh, there she goes. Okay. She disappeared. Hey, Tristian. These people are not just celebrating. It seems your feet has given them new hope. Amiri? Their wine is alright, nice and strong, but the appetizers, poof, barely a mouthful. Lindsay? Pour up to the brim so that, so that, oh, I must be drunk. I forgot the line. I'm there. Jayfall? They call this a feast? I'd show them some real festivities if they'd let me. Ugh, what, feasting on your family in front of everybody? Well, Tartuccio, hick, what, well, scum. And how did we, hmm, they have had one too many. Hi, right, Mygar. This man is obviously more comfortable on the battlefield than in the company of nobles. He's well built, but the expensive waistcoat he's wearing doesn't quite fit properly, as though it was borrowed. He has a few pale scars across his face, and his dark hair is drawn into an unkempt ponytail with a few streaks of grey running through it. He greets you with a broad smile and a firm handshake. Let me introduce myself. I'm Mygar Varn, I think it's pronounced Magar, but I say Mygar, the new ruler of Dunsward, your neighbor to the east. Like you, I'm about to be a baron. Great job with the stag board, by the way. Not everyone could exterminate a whole gang of bandits with such a small team. How did you earn the title of baron? Truth be told, my team and I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Jamandi Adori needed someone reliable to take and hold the territory. I'm the captain of a mercenary team, if that wasn't clear. Varnling host. Have you heard of us? No? No matter. We've done work for Jamandi before. This time, the task was simple. We just waltzed into the area, cleared out the most brazen monsters, and built a small fort to hold the place. And for that, a barony and land to own. It was a dream job. Well, how do you feel being a noble? Looking at his rich clothes, Varn smirks, like a pheasant on a plate. I've killed all kinds of monsters, but this is the first time I've so strongly felt like turning away could get me eaten. <laughs> he nods toward an arrogant man in the other corner of the room. See that lad? Baron Drelov. He's not like us. Who knows what generation of Baron he is. Didn't even shake my hand. You and me, we're like dirt beneath his boots. That's why those like us, the newly made nobility, need to stick together. Otherwise, he'd take my land and yours in the blink of an eye. See, the first time through, I liked him, but at the same time I was skeptical. I felt like he was trying to uh, trying to play me for a fool. Because he, he helps you out later on too. Like he'll, He sends you like supplies and stuff and events. And I'm like, alright, this guy's just trying to get cozy with me, he's gonna attack me. But no, he's actually, he's a good guy. He's, uh, one of my favorite secondary characters in the game. Well, it was nice meeting you. Farewell. Goodbye. Once you've settled in, come pay us a visit. Which I'd love to do, but your guards keep stopping me on the border. Alright, uh, Chandra Murphy? Ah, yes. I see good old Restov hasn't changed a bit. Even the smell in the streets is the same. Natalia Sartova. Natalia Sartova is discussing something with an unfamiliar old lady in a low voice. Upon noticing you, she breaks into a sugary sweet smile. You're not only tough, but quick. Well, congratulations on your victory. Enjoy it while you can. Is this a threat? I would never. I simply wish to warn you, in case you don't fully realize the fate that awaits you and your barony. And what do you think awaits me? Nothing good, I fear. The Adori, our dearest friends, didn't seem... They didn't deem it necessary to inform you of their plans, I assume. You see, they're preparing to separate from Bravoy, and it will not be a peaceful process. They lack the strength, currently, hence using this legal loophole to create some independent allies. Once the civil war breaks out, your lands will be the first to endure a strike from Bravoy's forces. Perhaps they'll erect a memorial stone and independent rest off to honor you. Well, I wouldn't count on even that, really. And what would you propose? In your situation, the most reasonable course of action would be to align yourself with the lawful rulers of Bravoy, the noble houses. The Adori won't dare to rebel, knowing they will immediately become entrapped. You can help Bravoy avoid a civil war, while simultaneously enjoying some well-deserved peace in your lands. I believe Jermandi has already attempted to impose a guard on you as an emissary. I'm, I'm guessing her lowborn stepson, the green-skinned boy Kassil. It's up to you, of course, but I would recommend you a different envoy. Please meet Chandra Murphy. 
an experienced diplomat who's more familiar with Bravois' politics than any brawler could be. The old woman standing next to Natalia gives you a slight bow. I'd be happy to help you establish diplomatic relations with Bravoy. Well, I'll consider your proposal. Uh, think on it. Do not make any hasty decisions. Now, Chandra is unique. She's a, she's an advisor that's hard to come by. I don't remember which one it is. But we haven't looked at her sword yet. Lord Protector Dueling Sword. Uh, the handle of the sword is wrapped in Batoid's leather, and there's a faded marking on its blade. So it's uh, plus two, it has loyal and finesse wielding. Uh, so loyal, uh, loyal weapon refuses to damage allies of its wielder. Weapon's attack bonus is reduced by minus five against friendly targets. So it's good if you get like mind controlled or something or confused. It's nice to see the beginning of a future noble family. I do what I must. Oh yeah, it's Vonky Keeg. A handsome man with a weather-beaten face grasps your hand tightly in his rough, calloused palms. Unlike the rest of the guests in their festive clothes, he wears a simple robe. The only luxury you see on him is a holy symbol of Aristotle made of solid gold. The other guests look at him with respect, some bordering on awe. Congratulations on your victory, he says in a deep voice. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Zvonki Keeg, High Priest of Aristotle and Restov. Uh, see, so bringing law into the Stolen Lands is a difficult endeavor. I'd be grateful for any help you could spare. Ah. Uh, Man, all right. Our most pious aspirations are often hindered, but it is not the case that overcoming such obstacles allows us to become closer to our God. I give you my blessing, and I believe you'll be able to overcome these hardships and achieve your goals. Uh, do many people... Wow, I was one off. <sighs> do many people in Restov venerate Aristotle? They revere many gods in Restov. They pray to Abadar, patron of cities, and Phrasma, gatherer of souls. There are also some more rare cults, but there's no denying that the stag god has the largest congregation here. And no wonder. People here have lived off farming and hunting for centuries. Well, you dress surprisingly simply for such a festive occasion. The corners of the priest's mouth turn up in a faint smile. The nobles dress in silks and satins to stand out from the poor. A priest wears a simple robe to stand out from the nobles. Well, it was an honor to meet you. Goodbye. Aristotle will keep you. So if you pass that diplomacy check, he gives you, I think, a free building. Um, or it's a project, I think. He gives you like a shrine to Aristotle or something for free in your, in your town. Yosef Salamius. An older man with the full sideburns looks at you with interest through a golden eyeglass. Well now, if it isn't the hero of the festivities, the protege of our dear Jamandi. You pulled this all, you pulled this all off quite cleverly. I confess. I wasn't convinced your enterprise would succeed. I even bet a bottle of my best Patoxian wine against you. But I'm happy to admit I was wrong. The Adori have always been adept at finding new talent. I don't believe we've been introduced. So it would seem. I am Yosef Salemius, Lord Mayor of Restov. I rule this town and the adjacent lands. As your northern neighbor, I hope we can look forward to a long and fruitful friendship. So you rule Restov. And what about the Adori? Ah, Brevois' politics seem complex and incomprehensible to many. Here, in this part of Rosslyn, the spirit of the northern freedom still lives. We are loyal to the throne, of course. May the gods prolong the life of his highness. But here, far from the dominions of the great houses, we have our own way of life. It's especially important now, after the certain events that I probably don't need to name. The Adori sword lords used to rule, the, rule Rosslyn. They're still the largest land owners and main military force in the region. But it's not for nothing that Restov is called a free city. We're proud to choose the Lord Mayor from among the citizens, considered not by their lineage, but by their own merits. Uh, what kind of events were you talking about? Mayor Salemius gives you a patronizing smile. Why, an aspiring politician needs to be well informed. I'm talking, of course, about the disappearance of the ruling house Regarvia. Can you imagine it? Old man Coral conquered our land two centuries ago. It'd be a shameless lie to say that nobody wished his royal house could just disappear into thin air. But once that exact thing happened, turned out nobody was ready for it. Poof. All over the country, every member of the royal house disappeared without a trace. Nobody knows what happened. It is a mystery, but a mystery pregnant with opportunity for everyone. And how are things in Restov? I don't want to boast, but things have been going well in recent years. 
Trade prospers, the population grows, and th the citizens are happy. Although recently, especially after the disappearance of House Regarvia, more and more troublemakers have been appearing, and people are talking about the most shocking things. Uh, but those sorts of rumors aren't worthy of your attention. Well, it was nice meeting you. Goodbye. Please wait a moment. Your young barony will need resources to establish itself, and from what I've been told, you're somewhat in need of financial assistance. I could organize and supply everything you need for the construction, and spread out the costs on extremely favorable terms. I could immediately procure, let's say, 500 cartloads of building supplies. I'm sure that would give you a good start. In exchange, I would ask a small favor, until you're paid the debt in full, you simply assume the obligation of contracting building services through Restov's Builders Guild. Do we have a deal? Uh, thank you for the offer, but I can't accept. It's your choice, of course. I just figured I'd mention it. Because I think that comes back to bite you in the butt later. The feeling is mutual, I assure you. I look forward to hearing more of your dazzling successes soon. Today is a historic day for Restov and maybe for all of Bravoy. All right, Jamandi. So, how do you like our little gathering? I hope you've made some useful connections. Shall we move on to the official proceedings? Uh, before we begin, I'd like to talk about the envoy I'll be taking with me. My apprentice, Cassil Aldori, will go with you, won't he? Yes, that's my decision. Whatever you choose, I won't argue. But you must choose your inner circle with the utmost care. So all the um, envoys have an alignment. I don't remember what I don't remember what Landers is. I think it's like chaotic neutral or something. Uh, Cassiel is lawful good, and I don't remember what Mervy's is. But anyway, I am ready for the ceremony. Excellent. Stand here. Lords and ladies, today we are here to honor three brave people who have done the impossible. They've tamed the stolen lands. Baron Hannes Drelev, the new master of Glenabon, Captain Mager Varn, the conqueror of Dunsward, and finally, the tamer of the Shrike Hills, who put an end to the atrocities of the Staglord's bandits. Step forward. On behalf of the people of the free city of Restov, I confer upon you this noble title. Rise, your grace. All right, and I'm a I'm a baron. Look at that. That's all it takes. Just gotta kill a uh, a bandit king. And uh, yeah, that's it. So if any of you guys out there are looking for or trying to move up in the world, just find yourself a bandit king, take him out, and tell someone about it. Victory. The stag lord's dead, and the capital of the new barony has been built in place of his fort. That was how the long and challenging taming of the stolen lands began. Greetings, Baron. Greetings, Baron. I assume they have different voices. Keston Garess. Welcome, Your Grace. Keston salutes you. You can see he's a bit anxious. It seems he rehearsed his speech many times. Let me once again congratulate you on your victory and your new title. Lady Jamadi transferred me here. I'm at your disposal. I am not one to bestow honors, but I want you to know I'm glad to serve you. I'm here to welcome you on behalf of your new capital citizens. The Stag Lord's firmers, former stronghold will soon be a thriving city. Uh, word travels fast, and the first settlers have already arrived, with new ones approaching as we speak. While you're visiting Restov, much has been done here. Your benefactors, the Adori, invested a great deal of resources in rebuilding the city. I stand ready to answer your questions and to show you around the most important sites. Now, the main question is, where can I get a drink or three? It's time to toast my victory. Kesson hesitates a brief moment, then laughs. I'll make sure to show you, uh, the moment we enter the city. The tavern was the first business that opened. Building a city is thirsty work. And, um, I beg your forgiveness for my behavior during the re your reception. I drank a little too much. It is a day for celebration. Uh, where are my companions? They're all somewhere around here, but I never kept an eye on who went where exactly. Well, I assume Tristian is with Jod, and you can always find Lindsay. Just follow the noise and turmoil. Are there any citizens I should know about? Our old acquaintance Jod is right here. Aristotle's clerics normally don't like cities much, but he's eager to serve you. Also, the emissary from Bravois is here. 
waiting for you in the throne room. There's also this curious matter. An elf has paid us a visit. A blind elf. Desna only knows how he managed to get here. He seems peaceful, even pleasant fellow, though naturally a little odd, so let him stay a while. It's up to you to decide what to do with him now. Uh, that's about it, I guess. Keston scratches his head. And what's the mood of the people here? I must admit, I've never seen anything like it like that in my whole life. A city, a whole barony born right in front of our eyes. The people sense the moment, and today we're feeling proud. As a rule, I'm not too cheerful or chatty. I normally feel out of place among all the rejoicing, but today is just one of those days. Well, I'm ready to look around the city. Lead the way. Follow me, your grace. Alright, I don't want to call it here because I don't know if like this little cutscene will bug out. If I uh, quit and come back. Greetings, your grace. We are, well, your new subjects. We're selecting a site to build our house. It's wet near the lake and windy up here on the hill. A fine place to throw garbage at your neighbor's heads, though. Ouch. It's a good thing you got rid of those monsters and bandits, Your Grace. I don't know. Monsters are still around. I didn't clear out all the, uh... The side areas. Do you recognize this place, Your Grace? This is where the Staglord's Fortress Wall used to be. Not that it saved him in the end, huh? Our workers did a fine job turning this bandit den into the heart of the town. The heart of every town is in its main square. We plan to hold street festivities and fairs here. Look, we already have our first vendor. Greetings, Your Grace. If you turn to the right from the square, you'll end up straight in our tavern. The tavern's ale is blessed by Caden Callium himself, I swear. The lady who owns it is a, is a, is a gem. Oh my goodness. I've heard our baron is tall as a troll, has hair of pure gold, and can breathe fire. Oh, that's all nonsense. Except for the part about breathing fire. All barons can breathe fire. Trust me. Uh, well, welcome, Your Grace. Glad to serve you. Your Grace, those are our guards. They keep order in this city, or keep their mouths busy with gossip. The commander is something, something... I forgot his name. Here's the observation platform. Hope one day your capital will grow large enough that we won't be able to see its full extent from this perch. The building in front of us is your residence. That's where we'll head where we'll head to now. Alright, welcome to Barony. Don't show this tutorial. I got it figured out. So now we've reached the main chambers. This is the throne room, where you hold court and receive visitors. Let me draw your attention to this large map, depicting your barony and its surroundings. We'll mark all the important scout reports and other news worthy of your attention, your grace's attention. Having finished his speech, Keston tucks his thumbs under his belt and stands quietly. Alright, greetings, your grace. Cassil, Lady Jamadi's ward, gives a polite bow. It was a pleasure to meet you at, Restov at the Restov reception. On behalf of your allies and benefactors, the Aldori Sword Lords, I'd like to offer you some advice. You can solve most of your barony's problems by granting appointments to the right people, responsible people. A certain state business will demand your personal attention, as will the visits of especially important guests. Reports of such outstanding events will be marked on your map. You can always check it while considering your plans. 
According to the ancient traditions of Brevoy and most of the River Kingdoms, rulers address affairs of state and receive visitors at the beginning of the month. My advice to you is to maintain this tradition and regularly visit your capital when needed. The first thing you should do as a ruler is assign loyal people to all the important positions in your barony. Your clerics, Jod and Tristian, were the first to seek an audience. I'll distract you further, and I'll leave you to consider. Once again, my congratulations. May your, may your rule be long and prosperous. Your Grace, allow me to congratulate you on receiving the title of Baron. I am confident that you will be able to bring order to these troubled lands. Jod stumbles slightly. Though to be honest, that isn't exactly what we wanted to speak to you about. Trissy and I have been talking a great deal about what happened at the Temple of the Elk. It doesn't all make sense to us yet, but one thing is clear. There's a powerful curse at work. It corrupted the very essence of that sacred place, steeping it with putrescence. Ugh. I am disgusted with whoever could do this. Jod exhales loudly, catching his breath. And now there is a new woe. Tristan and I believe the curse did not simply disperse of its own accord. There's a place near the capital rumored by the locals to be cursed. Tristan and I have visited this dreadful place. We felt the same putrescence as at the Temple of the Elk. Uh, what is this place? Where is it? There's a bald hilltop not far from here, to the north of the capital. Its crown is entirely barren of life. The locals believe that rituals glorifying the dark gods were held there back in ancient times. There is no longer any trace of such rituals, but the air around the hilltop is heavy to the point of stifling. The place is like a rotting wound, closed but not healed. And this wound would undoubtedly open again. Tristan and I felt something approaching, something ominous. The curse will soon return to plague us once more. I swear by Aristotle. Well, I'll go there as soon as I am able. I'd be happy to accompany you, but I would not expect to see anything new there at present. I agree with Tristan. We have been to this hilltop. It's barren, though filled with a dense atmosphere of unease. Well, what do you suggest? The curse will grow in strength, and we predict it will reach the peak of its strength in about one month. That's when we should visit the bald hilltop and resolve this issue. For now, we can only wait and prepare. We beg your pardon, Your Grace, for intervening with you getting the grasp of your barony. I'm sure you have even more pressing matters at hand right now. Do I, though? Okay, hopefully there's no more talking. I can call it an episode. Alright, it will not be called the Stolen Lands. I'm going to call it... Conqueror's Keep. Alright, and I'm going to call the episode here. In the next one, we will uh, deal with our barony. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next episode.